Today we're working on Scherzo, the final song in Solos for Young Violists by Barbara Barber. Welcome. Welcome to the studio. My name is Cassie and I'm a professional violist and teaching artist. So today we're going to work on the Scherzo. We're going to do a tutorial first, so have your pencils ready. Then we'll do a slow playthrough and an at tempo playthrough. So I'm going to start at the very beginning of this piece. I'm going to check my key signature. I've got two sharps. My time signature is 2-4, so I know I've got two beats in the measure, a quarter note gets one beat, and we're going to be practicing or working up towards spiccato or sauté, depending on the final tempo that we choose. So that's a bow stroke that I did a tutorial on. If that's new to you, check that out. I'll post it below and in the comments. And I also post the timestamps in the comments if you want to skip the tutorial or skip the, sl the slow playthrough or go right to the fast playthrough. So right from the very beginning, I'm going to start, I'm going to work on maintaining my bow in the middle. I don't want to be at the frog or the tip. The optimal spot is right in the middle. And it's also piano, so I'm not going to be too close to my bridge. I'm going to be kind of hugging the fingerboard a little bit more. So let's try this. It's just straight 16th notes for this first page. <laughs> So again, if shifting is new to you, I did do a tutorial on that, and I will also post that in the comments, um, but we may need to stop the video and practice using my first finger to go from B to D a couple of times to measure that distance. So let's just try it right now together. I'm putting my first finger on the A string on B, and I'm going to use that to shift up to third position. And again, when I do that shift, you want your whole arm to move with you. You don't want your wrist to do the, to do the motion or the finger to do the motion. So your whole forearm is going to help you do that motion. So I'm starting right in that measure. That's measure 10. This is high two, high three. Shift back down to first position. Now there is a repeat back to the beginning. I'm just going to continue on right now. So this is letter B. This is also another out of the blue, gotta find it really quick third position spot. So you might need to stop the video again and go from that open A. Stop it, use your one to find third position and then plop your four. One really important thing about shifting, we don't wanna ever shift to a note, we wanna to shift to a position because the position is usually closer than the finger that we're looking for. So in this instance, going from that A to that fourth finger G, I'm not thinking about going to the G, I'm thinking about going with my first finger to third position. It'll make it a little bit easier for you. So starting right at B, it is a four, and then it's high three. Two, one, shift back to first position. Find third position. First position on that C sharp. Low two. So that one on B, use that one to find third position, then it's high two, high three, touching four. Now once you're in third position, as you climb up two, three, four, if you can leave those fingers down, you're just going to go right back down, so you might as well leave them in place. So I'm going to start from measure 28, which is that measure we just practiced the shift on. Shift, now leave two down, leave three down. First position. Now we're going to slow down and get quieter, which brings us to the second page. So this is kind of a, a piece of contrasts. We've got the really fast scherzo first page, and then we get to this beautiful lyrical section on the second page. Meno moso means less motion, literally, but what it means to us is that we're going to go a little bit slower. So I'm going to start right there on measure 33 at the Meno moso, and I'm working on my legato bow stroke and using lots of vibrato. Use fourth finger. Use four again. This is a 
new phrase. Low two. So let me stop. I forgot to mention there's a key change at the manomoso. So we no longer have C sharps here. So all of our C's are going to be low twos. Let's actually start on that in measure 41. Low two. Slide up, high two, touching three. Use this open D to shift back to first position. Is the recapitulation is the same as the beginning and our key changed back here so we have F sharps and C sharps so starting right there it's the same thing we had at the beginning we're gonna stay right in the middle of the bow as you're doing this if um, this stroke is difficult for you if playing fast notes is difficult you might want to either find a friend or find a wall and have them hold right right above where your funny bone is so that only your lower arm can open and close. It's kind of like a karate chop. I know this is not really a karate chop, but um, you, like the way the cartoon characters would do that karate chop, it's that motion of just opening and lowering your lower arm. So if you find yourself utilizing your upper arm, you're in the wrong part of the bow or your wrong part of your arm is moving and standing against the wall or having a friend just kind of hold your upper arm there can really help isolate that. So back to that tempo one again, open and close motion. This is wrong. You can see the difference immediately. So I'm starting in measure 65. Shift. Now as you get better at that shift, we don't want to wait till the last second to do that shift. I've got two open A's. And as soon as I start playing that A, I'm already in motion going up towards third position. The sooner you can get there, the better. Starting right in that measure, which is measure 68. Shift back down. Now notice, as soon as I started playing those A's, I also already shifted back up to third position to be ready for that. Don't wait till the last second. Starting right at D, plop that four. Shift back down. Shift back up. Shift back to first position. some weird notation here. So I'm going to play my open A and where my third finger usually goes, I'm going to place a harmonic weight finger, which means my finger is just going to barely sit on top of that string where my three usually goes. And it should get you this really high pitched kind of whistle tone. We're going to do the same thing on the D string. So play your open D and then where your three usually goes, you're going to play that last final harmonic. I find that it's really useful to stop my bow on the string, set my finger, and then try to do the harmonic. If I try to do it legato, sometimes the uh, vibration of the string kind of impedes the harmonic from sounding. So that might be the case for you too. Um, these are really tricky to find if you've never found them before, so it might take a little doing. But I'm gonna show you up close. If I'm in slightly the wrong spot, it won't sound. So I might have to dig around a little bit for it. You want the one that is the ringiest. That's going to be the correct harmonic at the end there. So we just finished our tutorial. I know it was kind of a quick blow through. If I didn't cover anything that you're still wondering about, post it in the comments below so that the rest of our community can benefit from it too. With that said, we are ready for our slow playthrough. All right, I've got my metronome set to quarter note equals 80, and we're going to go right through it. We will do all of the repeats. One. Two, ready, go.
our fast playthrough, the piece suggests that our quarter note equals 144. I'm going to do quarter note equals 120 right now. So I will again count to two twice and we'll begin. Right in the middle of the bow and then we're going to go for that um, spiccato slash saute stroke. One, two, ready, go. <laughs> subscribing to the channel really helps other violists find it too and I really appreciate it. If there's anything that I didn't cover that you're still wondering about post it in the comments so that the rest of the community can benefit too and as always happy practicing. <laughs>